So you just started doing graffiti, or maybe you've been doing graffiti for quite some time, and for some weird reason you decided to pick a name with double letters. You're sitting there, you're sketching, and you're thinking, oh my god, why, why did I choose this name? It sucks. I hate my double letters. Whatever shall I do? Well, today, that's exactly what we're going to be covering. We're going to be talking about double letters and what exactly the issue is with them, and kind of the hurdles they end up causing. And we're also going to look at some incredible graffiti artists in order to see how they solve this very issue. So let's check out our first double letter piece right here, which is beautiful. I, I love this piece, all right? <laughs> this piece is gorgeous. But you know what? We're not here to admire the entire piece. We're just trying to learn about double letters. So let me rein this in a little bit. The amount of letter uniformity that double letters provides you is ridiculous, and it's completely free. Like, you, you have a cheat code for flow. So in graffiti, line uniformity and similarity is typically the glue that holds pieces together. We can see that in this piece here, where he's got a lot, and I mean a lot of similar line. This is just an absolute constant in the piece. But while line uniformity and similarity is great for adding flow, letter uniformity and similarity is what makes letters look related to one another. It adds a sense of cohesion between the letters. And while it may not be as abundant as line uniformity and similarity, it still is really pivotal. All he did was just get the positive increase of flow from these two being uniform, and he decided, you know what, I want the first E to be a little bit more stout, because I don't want it to be as big or have as much weight as the second E. So this causes him to build the other two letters beside the first E around that thought process. Let me make the C bigger in order to compensate for the lack of weight. Let me take the S and do the same thing with that. Now, we're pretty much seeing the same thing happen again here, where he's got the larger three letters with the C, S, R, and then he's got really small but uniform double E's. Now, because this E is a smaller size, if we were to take these letters and just stand them perfectly upright, then he would have a huge amount of negative space right above the letter E. It wouldn't have gotten filled. So what does he do? He slightly alters the letter structure and the angle of the letter structure of the letter C in order to shoot over to the right a little bit in order to go ahead and help fill in that negative space. He does a very similar thing with the letter positioning of the lowercase e, very slightly tilting it to the right hand side for the same reason. Because that's going to allow the lowercase e to nudge itself really beautifully in this little triangular space that the slightly slanted S creates, going slightly up into the left, at least on the left side of the actual S's body. Because then the right side of the S does what the C does, and it goes up into the right, which then creates the same scenario for the second E that the first E had. So now he's using slight letter structure and letter positioning tricks in order to help these two double letters fit into the piece nicely. We got a lot of graffiti to look at today, so I gotta move on from this guy's piece, but I love his work. Once again, make sure to check out all the people in the description down below. Then we got Nexer. My god, man, where, where do I start with this, man? <laughs> his work is just too nice. It's way too dope, but yeah, let me rein myself in, because we're here to talk about double letters, not to fangirl over how beautiful this piece is. Keep things simple. We can see right here that not overcomplicating things works. It, <laughs> it works. That is a lowercase e. It is clear to see. It. It's really simplistic. That's part of the power of a double letter, and this is partially the artist's responsibility to become okay mentally with not overcomplicating it. Overcoming that hurdle and having the skill, trust me, having the skill and the knowledge of art to know when not to overcomplicate things. That's as much of a skill as being able to draw the letter itself. And it's a skill that he definitely flexes here because look at how dope this N is, right? So he's definitely added a lot of style to the N. The X is massive. The thing is huge. And the R is as well. But notice the E's are just your basic print font E. Nothing crazy about it. So some of you guys were saying, hey, John, look, when, when I have two E's that are similar, nothing else looks like it flows right with those two letters. Use this as a perfect example. Even little tiny things like this, that helps. That goes a long way to help. This little bit that he's got coming down here, which flows here and here, also flows right there with the E. And then it carries throughout the entire E, right? So this all kind of combines together. It all comes together to make a beautiful image for us. And we can really see that in this piece. There, there's a scene pun to be made there, but <laughs> I'm not going to be the one to do it. So he's using line uniformity and similarity through the S and the N in order to kind of make them flow with the two E's, despite the case that this may not have the most letter uniformity and similarity. So it still works out beautifully. Pancakes or waffles? This might seem like a random question, but I'm going to choose waffle because this piece is dope. All puns aside, I love this piece. But once again, I <laughs> got to rein myself in. I so badly want to just talk about the whole entire name and I can't. This video sucks. But check out the double F's here. Typically, this is a letter structure that tends to push things further away. So there's a lot of different ways you can go and handle this. One way a lot of people like to handle F's is they like to say this is the baseline that I'm drawing here. They like to put the F at a tilt and then take the next 
next letter and put that at a tilt as well. That's a really great way to handle the letter, especially depending on what the letter is. It works out beautifully. And we see him do exactly this. Now, he takes the first F and once again, he puts it on a tilt, takes the second F, puts it on a tilt. What happens here? It creates a little bit of a pocket right here between the two. Now, he's got to fill that and luckily for him, the letter F is great at doing so because, well, he's got not only this bit of the structure that can pop down and fill that gap, but he also has that part of the F that can fill that gap. And on the back of the F, he can take this basic box and protrude it through the stem of the M or the M what? The F. I know what a letter looks like and plop that over there and he's good to go. That's really an easy way to handle double letters. You got to think about letter positioning and double F's and double L's tend to be the hardest double letters to handle because of that fact, because they push things further away. As for something like double O's, like our friend Boogie here, that's a lot easier to handle. And the reason for this is because they don't, they, they, they don't bother anybody. The double O's, they, they, they get along really nicely with literally every single letter in existence. The letter O is a very versatile letter. The rounded surface of the O allows you any point you want for letter uniform, oh, I'm sorry, line uniformity and similarity. You can choose any point on that thing and get line uniformity and similarity out of it. Rounded letters are very, very good with that. Let's just go ahead and pick a different color, but you got the B that comes around this way and right along, I'm about to draw it for you here in a second, right along this edge, the B and the O share a line. And that's known as a shared line tangent or a shared edge tangent. It's got various names. And that's when two lines of different subjects come together to meet at a point. Now, because rounded letters are round, they have a lot of different angles they can hit where you can put a shared line tangent. You just erase the shared line tangent right here, like Boogie did. And what do you have? Boom, flow. But that's more of a letter positioning tool that you can use where you take one letter and you make sure it's close enough in order to actually have that shared edge. Now, one of the big issues with double O's, it's one of the more common double letters that you'll see in graffiti is people, once again, they think it's too bland, it's too easy. And that's typically the problem people have with double O's is they want to kind of really expand their skills with the other letters, but they feel like the O is holding them back. They, they can't, they're confined to the double O. So how do you go about fixing that? Well, Boogie shows us that as well. The first is to just stylize everything. But this does require that you are an extremely advanced graffiti artist who understands not only all of graffiti's fundamentals, but you have a pretty firm understanding of some fine art fundamentals as well, because you need to maintain a unified image despite all the individual letters not being unified. Keep in mind, once again, this is extremely advanced. So he's got a pretty stylistic B here. He's got a pretty stylistic O, and then a different O that looks nothing like the first one. It's literally the polar opposite, if you will, followed by a G, followed by a crazy I, followed by an E right there. The way he gets away with this one is not only is he changing each individual structure, but everything is colored totally different. So you know it's not even meant to resemble one another. The only things that take these individual letters and make them into a unified word that you can read is negative space management and letter name positioning. You see, language in general, and pretty much every single dialect works in such a way where different individual symbols or letters are positioned within a certain negative space threshold close to one another. That way they can make up a whole word. So this allows us in order to go ahead and take different letters, stylize them to a massive degree, make them look very different from one another. And if our negative space, if our letter positioning is perfect, then that very different letter combination will read as one cohesive word. And that's what we're seeing here. Now, the other and much more common and very practical way to go about a double O or double letters in general and not have them be really simple is to just add style to them. Now, I got to preface once again, this is some, this is some much more advanced stuff. New graffiti artists, keep it simple, all right? <laughs> this is, this part is for the advanced graffiti artists. I don't mean to exclude anybody, but I don't want you newer graffiti artists to try and run before you can walk. So for you more advanced graffiti artists, the issue is different letters react differently to style when style is injected into it. Just a little, littlest bit of style too. For example, if you add just a little hint of style to the letter R, not much happens as far as its style threshold is concerned. But if you take something like letter H, for example, letter O, for example, very much the letter O, if you add just the tiniest bit of style to it, its style threshold skyrockets really quickly. So in other words, you don't have to do very much at all to the letter O in order to make its style threshold more unified with other letters who have a higher base style threshold. Greedy artists, especially newer ones, they once again don't have the knowledge or the skill in order to keep it simple just yet. And as a result, they overcompensate for the O, they add way too much style to it, and it ends up having way too much seasoning for the dish, like the O's have so much more style than all the other letters, and now none of the other letters flow with the letter O. And they run into the exact opposite 
problem where all the other letters look a lot more simplistic when compared to the O. So dudes, that pretty much wraps up today's video. This was all about double letters and how they function. But if you want to learn more about graffiti and its fundamentals, feel free to check out the best how to do graffiti tutorials right here in this playlist. Also, your guys' support on the books lately has blown my mind. Like literally, this has been, it's been a wild experience. And right now, just to kind of keep you guys up to date, I'm trying to make our bundle book, the books about basic letter structure and basic techniques. I'm trying to make that into a physical copy. And I'm currently in the process of writing a book about style in all art forms. So thank you guys for the support. I really do appreciate it. It means the world to me. If you want to check those out, I got them in the description down below. And dudes, if you want some more graffiti content, check out the videos here on the bottom of your screen. And I'll catch you guys back here next week. Thanks for watching.